Back in February of this year, I took a first look at a game called The Cycle and had a lot of fun with it. It's described as a competitive quest shooter or PvEVP game that's also free to play. And that's a whole lot of letters, but it sounds more complicated than it really is. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at how the game has progressed since that point and the new stuff that it's brought to the table. And a big thanks to The Cycle for sponsoring this video. And if you'd like to check out the game for yourself, there is a link down in the description below. I thought that I'd give you guys a bit of a refresher before we dive in though. What do you actually do in this game? What are the main objectives? Is it just another BR game? I don't think it is. And it's doing a few unique things here. In the cycle, you drop down into a map with your main goal being to complete as many objectives as you gain. And doing this scores you victory points. The idea is to have more points than the enemy teams whilst also getting to the evacuation ship at the end. This means that not only will you be fighting against the natives of the world, various horrible beasts that want to eat you for dinner, but you'll also have to fight off enemy players too. So the objectives or quests here include things like capturing certain uplink points, eliminating rivals, finding drones and also harvesting materials. It's a pretty tense affair to be honest and depending on if you choose to play solos, duos or squads it can get quite hectic and whenever you're doing an objective expect enemies to appear. Just a small warning though if you're playing solos you can pact with other players to essentially team up. The downside for this though is that you lose your armor when you packed but the upside is there are two of you which can be incredibly powerful in solos and of course quite frustrating to fight against. Moving on though have I ever told you how much I like trains? It seems like trains are all the rage in FPS games right now. Apex, COD, PUBG, all games are adding trains and the cycle is no exception as they've just added the mag train. I guess 2020 really is the year of the train. And the mag train includes an optional contract that's been added into all game modes. And there are two trains in solo, duos and squads. Each train takes five minutes to load up. And then the train can be captured at the front by any player. When it's captured, it will move towards the center of the map, but it's not quite that simple. En route to the center of the map, the train passes through multiple ambush points. So it will be a challenge to hold on to it, but when the train is in transit, it's going to generate score for whichever player or team holds on to it. And then when it reaches its destination, the train begins to unload. And while it's unloading, it generates triple score for the owner. And then if it fully unloads, the train will shut down and it won't be available for capture anymore. So it creates a really cool action bubble within the game. To get a train loaded, delivered and unloaded though is not an easy task. And I found myself really struggling to hold on to it as a solo player, especially when I was coming up against packed enemies two at a time. Really fun to fight over it though and get it from A to B. Weapons have had some substantial changes too, for the better in my opinion. Originally I felt like they were a bit samey in their handling, but in this update the recoil across all weapons has been scaled up and some of the recoil patterns changed. That's not the biggest change however because all of the bullet and shard weapons in the game are now projectile based and that's a massive change for the gameplay. More than half of the weapons in the cycle are shard or bullet based so that's a fairly big leap. Energy weapons will remain hit scan for now though while they assess the changes. It's been a little while since I've played the game but I could definitely notice the difference and I think that it certainly added a bit more of a skill gap to the gunplay and I think that those projectile guns are a lot more fun to shoot now. Now arguably one of the biggest changes in season 3 is the addition of prospect station and with this update you can run around the station in third person and as such it does away with the old user interface. Instead of just utilizing the UI certain actions are now hooked directly into the station but at any time you can open up the quick menu to change up your loadout appearance or start a game and I guess that the idea for this is to be a social multiplayer hub very similar to something like the tower in Destiny. Having said that, if there are issues with it going forward, the devs have said that they've got the ability to make it single player only, but fingers crossed that won't be required. And when you're walking around the station, you can talk to the faction leaders to get new gear or get missions, or simply change your loadout via the lockers if the quick menu is not your thing. 
There are even new sounds and music to keep you entertained, and much like with the tower in Destiny and other games. This sort of social hub, I think, does lead to many other possibilities in the future, but it won't hinder you at the moment from quickly getting into a game if that's all you want to do. I think it's a cool addition for those who like the social aspects of these games. Back to the gameplay though, of course, with Season 3 starting recently, that brought with it a new battle pass. The Fortuna Pass this time around, it's got a load of skins, banners and two new prospectors. They're called Primetime and Ronin. Ronin, well that's a samurai without a master and as you would expect, Ronin comes equipped with a samurai sword and looks ready for battle. Primetime on the other hand is the complete opposite and you'll definitely see her coming towards you because of the neon lights and signature helmet. I personally prefer the look of Primetime because I just think she looks cool and I happen to have a couple of cosmetics unlocked for her. My personal favourite here being the blue screen helmet. And I suppose one of the other major gameplay changes that you should know about is that there's now a feature called the Recall Recharge. I've definitely had to say a few tongue twisters in this video. When you die, you will drop your recall battery wherever you were taken out and enemies can see your battery, but they can't interact with it. And if you can get back to it without dying, you can recharge your recall. It's a bit Demon Souls, but die before you get there and it's over. I never had too much trouble getting back to my battery though, but if you're being smart when you killed an enemy, you could, if you wanted to, <laughs> you could be that guy and hold the ground where their battery is to see if they come back and then finish them off for good. It's an interesting tactic. It's not just the new content though, there's been a load of changes and improvements to the game, including contracts, weapons, abilities and player suits. I think Jaeger, the devs of this game, have obviously been working really hard on this, despite the challenges of the current environment that we live in. As well as that, there's been tweaks to the AI, the sound effects, plenty of bug fixes. I think Season 3 is a pretty substantial update overall from what I could tell. I don't play the cycle that often, I like to dip into it every now and again, but I do think it offers a unique experience overall. At its core, you could consider it a BR game with a twist, but maybe more like something such as Hunt Showdown. The reality is though that you need to stay alive while completing objectives, and the main goal isn't really to be the last alive, and so that's the biggest difference there. I enjoy it whenever I play it. You can definitely have some fun here. And that's all for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you've played the cycle. What are your thoughts on it? And as I said at the start of the video it is free to play and there's a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. If you enjoyed the video leave a like. If you didn't a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.